What's going on? Welcome back to the channel. Today, you and I are gonna talk about what happens when you stop intermittent fasting. And keeping in mind, this is completely and utterly from a fat loss perspective. We're not gonna be talking about gut health, we're not gonna be talking about hormonal health. We are only talking about what happens when you stop intermittent fasting from a fat loss perspective. Also, if you haven't seen it already, I have a full intermittent fasting course. It's 100% free, it's on YouTube, the link is in the description. It's a full course on basically different ways to use intermittent fasting if you wanna give it a shot. But today we're gonna to talk about the three different options that could happen when you stop intermittent fasting. The first one being a full stop, just out of nowhere, you're like, I'm gonna stop doing it. We're gonna talk about that. Then we're gonna talk about something I call intermittent intermittent fasting. And the final thing is, let's say you're scared of doing a full stop because you're worried about losing all your progress or regaining a lot of fat. I'm gonna cover that as well. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you don't already. Let's get into it. All right, the first one we're gonna start with is the full stop. And this is basically the easiest way to ask the question of what happens when you stop intermittent fasting. No strings attached, no emotions attached. What happens from a fat loss perspective if you just stop intermittent fasting one day? And the simplest answer is nothing. As long as your calories are equivalent. So if you're intermittent fasting and you're eating 2000 calories a day, and then you stop intermittent fasting and you're eating 2000 calories a day, nothing changes. The reason this is really important to discuss is because a lot of people in the fitness industry have made it seem like intermittent fasting is inherently better, that it optimizes your hormones and your whole physiological system to burn more fat in less time, and that's not true. When you really think about it, intermittent fasting is a fancy way of saying that you're skipping breakfast and possibly delaying lunch. So when you put it like that, all of a sudden this whole idea of optimizing the fat burning process in your hormonal system, it just sounds ridiculous because you're skipping breakfast and maybe delaying lunch. That's all it is. So as long as your calories are in check and they're equivalent, nothing is going to change. And keep in mind, maybe, let's say you're intermittent fasting, we're gonna discuss this more down here, and intermittent fasting is actually causing you to eat more because maybe you're delaying your calories at the end of the day, until the end of the day, excuse me, then it might be better for you to not intermittent fast. And we're gonna really discuss this down here. But this just goes to show that as long as your calories are in check and they're equal, it stays the same. If not intermittent fasting allows you to eat fewer calories and stay in a calorie deficit more consistently, it's actually gonna be better to not intermittent fast because the reality is it doesn't matter if you're intermittent fasting or not as long as your calories are in check. So do whichever method will help you be the most consistent. All right, so moving on to number two, we have IIF. And you might be asking, well, what is, what is IIF? I've never heard of that. And you probably haven't because I made it up about 10 minutes ago. The reality is when we look at intermittent fasting, it's just you have periods of time where you eat and periods of time where you don't eat. That's all it is. So I made up intermittent intermittent fasting where you have periods of time where you're intermittent fasting and periods of time where you're not intermittent fasting. I think the easiest way to think about this is it's a very common question for people to say, well, what happens if I intermittent fast during the week and I don't intermittent fast during the weekend? Or what happens if I intermittent fast some days and I don't intermittent fast other days? I call that intermittent intermittent fasting. From a fat loss perspective, again, it doesn't matter as long as your calories are in check. But this is where we can get into another topic. Your hunger hormones take time to regulate, okay? So your hunger hormones tend to operate on a schedule. Think about this. Let's say you've been to Thanksgiving dinner or a birthday party or whatever it is, and maybe you ate a ton of food and you're stuffed and you're like, I'm never gonna eat again. But then three or four or five hours later, you're actually pretty hungry and you're like, why am I such a fat ass? How come I can eat so much? It's not because you're a fat ass, it's because that your hunger hormones are usually on a schedule and it helps to eat on a consistent schedule to keep your hunger hormones consistent. Whereas if you're doing something like this, where some days you're intermittent fast and some days you don't, your hunger hormones are more likely to be sporadic and then you're more likely to get hungry more often. Which is why for me and my inner circle members, I really like to recommend making sure you're on a consistent schedule. Regardless of whether or not you're intermittent fasting, I don't care which one you do, just make sure that you follow something consistently to make it as easy as possible to be consistent. All right, with all that said, let's talk about number three. And that stands for fear of the full stop. Because we spoke about number one, just as if there's no emotions attached, no strings attached, you just decide you wanna stop intermittent fasting. The reality is a lot of people are intermittent fasting because they're scared of not intermittent fasting. They're scared of the idea of having breakfast. And I'm telling you this from personal experience, this happened to me about a decade ago when I was intermittent fasting and I was scared to eat breakfast. And I remember one day just being like, this is ridiculous. I'm scared to eat breakfast. Why? And it was because I'd been led to believe that intermittent fasting 
was the single best way to optimize fat loss. And it had literally scared me away from eating breakfast. Until one day I called myself on that nonsense and I realized that calories were the most important part above all else for fat loss. And I required myself to eat breakfast because it might sound weird, but usually the thing that we're most scared of doing is the thing we need to do in order to help us get over our fears. Now, I didn't realize it at the time, but intermittent fasting was perpetuating my binge eating and I didn't tell anyone about it. I've made a video on it. If you wanna see how I overcame my binge eating, I have a link in the description. But it started from wrestling. I was wrestling from a young age, cutting a lot of weight, and then I got into intermittent fasting. And this idea of saving all of my calories for late at night was very tempting. And I did it for years. The issue is I ended up demonizing breakfast and getting scared of breakfast. And then I fell into that trap of, well, can't eat breakfast, so I'm gonna save all my calories for the, for the end of the day. And the more I saved, the more I could binge. And just kept on going and going and going until I decided I can't do this anymore. Binge eating is making me feel awful. It's isolating me from my friends and family. It's preventing me from being able to work as well as I can and from do what I want to do. So I required myself to eat breakfast and eating breakfast was the most important thing that I did in order to get over my binge eating and actually help me get to a leaner physique and be happier with my body. So if you're in a similar position, let's say you're intermittent fasting, you're scared of eating breakfast, I want you to really question yourself and push yourself. Why am I scared of eating breakfast? Is that reasonable? Would I ever tell anybody else to be scared of eating breakfast? If you would never tell your best friend to be scared of eating breakfast, then you should tell yourself the same thing. And I would challenge you to start eating breakfast, to stop intermittent fasting. Not because intermittent fasting is inherently bad, not because it can't help some people, but because if you yourself as an individual, if you are scared of eating breakfast because you're intermittent fasting, and maybe you're not even achieving your goals, maybe you're not where you wanna be yet, question that and push yourself to make the decision to start eating breakfast. Because I would bet that if you start eating breakfast, odds are you're gonna start developing a better relationship with food. And if you wanna continue losing fat, it's gonna be easier for you to maintain a calorie deficit. Now, some things to consider. The first time you're gonna eat breakfast, you're probably gonna feel anxious. Maybe that'll last for the first week or maybe even the first month. Usually I found it'll last anywhere between from the first day to the first two weeks or so. It can last longer for sure. But if you're going from this place of never eating breakfast because you're fearful it's gonna make you fat and or this place of not eating breakfast because you wanna save your calories for nighttime, the anxiety can be very severe. But it's one of those things where you have to push through it because oftentimes what'll happen is once you start eating breakfast, the desire to binge at night goes away. And it sounds counterintuitive, but I promise you, when you start eating breakfast and you stop saving those calories, because what happens is when you save the calories, you almost justify and you're planning for the binge. But when you eat breakfast earlier and you have a bigger breakfast, you're no longer planning for the binge. It's not something that you're expecting to do. In fact, it's something you really don't want to do and you're planning to not do it. So by eating breakfast earlier in the day, you're going to develop a better relationship with food and odds are you're not going to binge later on. Now, another thing that's important to consider here is your fullness cues. And a lot of people who struggle with binge eating have a lot of difficulty feeling full. They can eat and eat and eat and eat. And even if they don't want to eat, and even if they feel themselves getting very distended, they can still eat more. And they're still almost hungry and ravenous, even though they shouldn't be. And that can happen oftentimes from intermittent fasting, from delaying your first meal and saving your calories at night and having big binges. When you start eating breakfast, you're going to start to feel your hunger cues again and also your fullness cues. And it's so important to get those regulated. Now I know this can cause anxiety. And I know it can be very difficult, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. And if you want to start feeling full and to get that sensation back so you can stop binging, I very much encourage you to start eating breakfast because it will help you get those hunger and fullness cues back to more of a healthy schedule. So with all of that said, to answer the question, what happens when you stop intermittent fasting? Nothing. As long as your calories are in check from a fat loss perspective, nothing changes. Going full circle though, and to what I really talk about in all of my content on YouTube and Instagram, my podcast, everything, nothing works if you're not consistent. And if intermittent fasting is causing you to be inconsistent with your calories, it's gonna be worse for you. If you can do intermittent fasting and you have a healthy relationship with food, and it helps you, helps you stay consistent with your calories, amazing, keep doing it. But if it's causing you to be inconsistent and develop an unhealthy relationship with food, that's when it's gonna be worse. And that's when you really need to think, is it worth it? Should I just start eating breakfast? And I would very much encourage you to start, especially if it's causing you to binge eat at night. 
So with all that said, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you don't already. If you have any questions, you can text me here. And also, you might wanna check out my podcast because I talk a lot more about binge eating. I interview people who are struggling with it and help them get over it. Link, to the, link in the description to a couple of my most popular binge eating podcasts. In the meantime, have a wonderful day. Talk to you soon.